So accounting coach, survival tips, Jonathan Ruiz. So I'm here again to share with you another lesson for management advisory and services. Okay, so thank you so much for really good comments and feedbacks and for your requests for some topics. You know, uh, just wait. I'm doing all of it, all of your requests. Okay, so but before I move on, okay, if you haven't downloaded yet the seven habits of highly effective students, please, please do so. The uh, download link is on the description. So just sign up on that link. Then uh, you will receive through an email the download link. Okay, so it's very easy. So please, if you have any families, friends uh, that you think uh, uh, it will help them, please do share it with them. Okay, so let's move on for today's topic. Okay, so like what I have said, we are moving to break-even analysis. Okay, this topic is really one of the easiest topic. Okay, I love this topic. This is uh, applicable also once you entered in the uh, job market actually if you are going to work as a cost accountant cost controller or management accountant okay so this is uh, also the very foundation of cost accounting and for the succeeding topics as well so you really need to master it the formula and the concepts okay so what we are waiting for so let me just hide my face here so okay so let's move so our agenda is break-even analysis. Okay, I will give you the definition, formulas, and an example. Okay, so um, like what I have said, this is an easy topic. Okay, so but before that, I want you to understand how to get the uh, break-even point. But before that, you need to understand this contribution margin income statement. Okay, so here... Actually, the cost of goods sold was separated into variable costs and fixed costs. In this example, you have sales, 50,000 units, and the amount is 1 million. Variable cost is 600,000, and then the contribution margin is 400,000. And then you have the fixed cost, which is 400,000. Here, you don't have any income from operation, so probably... Those companies that are just in their startup phase or in the, in, in the first or second year of operations, you will see it in the income statement. So no net income, so neither loss, neither profits. So contribution margin is available to cover the fixed cost and income from operations. So what does it mean? The contribution margin actually should cover all your fixed costs. Okay, and then once you are, you are able to cover the fixed cost, then that is the time that the company will have their income. Okay, so it's very important. If you are a cost accountant, you need to understand what will be the contribution margin because actually variable cost is a controllable cost. So then uh, here you can already understand if the company will be profitable in the future. Okay. So here is another calculation. So it's very important to understand the calculation of contribution margin. In this contribution margin income statement, you already have 100,000 income from operations, meaning your fixed cost here is 300,000 and then the contribution margin is 400. So the income is 100,000. Contribution margin is greater than the fixed cost. Okay. Now, in the calculation of contribution margin ratio, so actually this is also asked in the uh, multiple choice questions, quizzes, even in the CPL. Okay, so how do you calculate the contribution margin ratio? Okay, it's very simple. Your sales is at 100% in this example. So the variable cost here is 60%, which is the 600,000. Then the contribution margin ratio is 40%. Okay. So the formula is very simple, sales minus variable cost over or divided by the uh, 1 million here, which is the sales. So the contribution margin ratio is 40%. Okay, so again, I have to ask you, what is the break-even point? So revenues equals cost. So no income, nor loss. Now, I will come back to another 
uh, way to express the contribution margin. So there are three ways actually, which is through the contribution margin in pesos or in dollars. Here in the example is 400,000 through a percentage. Okay, here 100% less the 60%, so that is 40%. Here in dollars per unit or pesos per unit, the selling price, which is 20, the variable cost, uh, which is 12. So then the contribution margin is 8. Okay, now calculating the break even point. So remember, at the break even point, fixed cost and the contribution margin are equal. So contribution margin here, 90,000. So your fixed cost is 90,000. Okay. To calculate, then we have the formula, which is fixed cost over contribution margin per unit. So here, the total fixed cost is 90,000 divided by your contribution margin, which is 10. So that is equivalent to 9,000 units. So easy, like what I have said, uh, uh, you just need to understand what is a contribution margin. Now, uh, here is another example, okay? So fixed cost is 840,000 divided by 105, which is the contribution margin. So your break-even sales per unit is 8,000 units. So let's make an assumption, which is, the variable cost is increased by 5. So it's one, from 145 to 150. So then 250 less the 150, you have 100 as your contribution margin. So then in pesos, okay? So then uh, the calculation will be fixed cost over uh, 840,000 divided by 100. So that is 8,400 8, per unit, units. 8,400 units is your break-even sales per unit. Okay. Another example here, 600,000 is your fixed cost. And then the unit contribution margin is 20. So then what you will get is 30,000 units. So that is your break-even sales. So it's very simple like what I have said. If you already know uh, how to get the contribution margin, then the break-even sales is easy to calculate. Just remember this uh, presentation because you can just work backward if the income is given, if the fixed cost is given, then uh, the sales as well and the variable cost, you can just move, uh, calculate it backward or forward. You can use as well algebraic formula here, okay? So another example, so let's make an assumption if the selling price from 50 becomes 60, 60. so then, 600,000 uh, 600, divided by 30, that is 20,000 units. Okay, so summary. So I want to give you the effects of changes in the break-even point. Okay, so the type of change. If fixed costs increase, then the effect on break-even sales per units also increase. If the fixed costs decrease, then the effect on break-even sales is also decrease. What about variable cost per unit? If the variable cost increase, then the break-even sales increase. If the variable cost decrease, then uh, the break-even sales also decrease. What about the unit sales price? If the unit sales price increase, the break-even sales decrease. So that means uh, inverse relationship. Unit sales price decrease, then the effect on break-even sales increase. Okay, just take a screenshot of this and memorize it. It could be asked in your multiple choice questions. Okay, so let's go to some of the assumptions of cost volume profit analysis. So the reliability of cost volume profit analysis depends upon several assumptions. So these are can be asked in multiple choice questions or true or false. First is total sales and total costs can be represented by straight lines within the relevant range. When you say relevant range, this is the normal operating activity. The efficiency of operations does not change. So then meaning the efficiencies does not change. Cost can be accurately divided into fixed and variable as you have seen it in the contribution margin income statement. 
then the sales mix is constant. And then lastly, there is no change in the inventory quantities during the period. Okay, so recap. We already discussed what is the break-even point. I gave you the contribution margin income statement and the formula, of course, and some examples. So thank you so much. So our next topic will be variable costing. So this topic is also AC. So I hope you learned, okay? And if you have any families and friends that you think that these video lessons will help, please do share it with them and if you haven't subscribed yet to be updated on my future lessons please click the subscribe button below thank you so much and mabuhay po kayo